Hello everyone, my name is Kumia Ross and in today's video I'm going to be exposing Jason Vincent, who works for the Cuyahoga County Department of Children and Family Services. Now Jason Vincent was a supervisor uh, who was managing my case. He had actually had the case transferred to him within about a month or two ago. He hadn't been on the case very long. Uh, he was the supervisor of my caseworker Becky Sawyers who had actually gone on a leave and was on a leave now for about a month. And Jason Vincent never once met with me, he never talked with me, never spoke with my son, never came out to see us or to question us or to get to know us or anything like that. So I just want to let you know that. So within a couple months of having this case, there was an incident that actually occurred where, you know, there was my son had gotten into some trouble at the school, they, the police was called, they took him to the hospital to have him evaluated. So Jason Vincent takes the opportunity during this time to bring it upon himself to ask for emergency custody, to file for emergency custody, to have my son removed from my custody and out of the home after my son had already been released back into my custody now, had been in my custody for about, about eight months. The Department of Children and Family Services had already made the decision that he was okay to come home, that they felt he should be at home and he was fine. But Jason Vincent's petition to the court that he did not feel that I was taking care of my son's mental health and he was not getting his mental health treatment. He said all these things about how I was delusional, suffering from psychosis, had schizophrenia and all these things. Now I'm going to put up a evaluation report that you can see here from when I actually was in the hospital. I was pink slipped and stayed in the hospital for about three days. And this is what the doctor said. Uh, I was not suffering from any type of psychotic disorders or behavior. They had full in debt interviews with me. I met with numerous uh, different doctors and therapists while there. They observed me for three days and did not see any of the things that Jason has observed. The Department of Children and Family Services has been trying to force a mental health illness and diagnosis on me now for about two years. They have had me take numerous evaluations. And as you can see in this evaluation, it says a possible psychotic uh, diagnosis, but it's unspecified. And the doctor at the time told me in the hospital that she did not feel the need to put me on any type of med medication. So they have been trying to force something on me, yet no one has been able to state what I have. They might label that I have anxiety or that I have a depression or any of those disorders which I don't have any symptoms of is something that I had in the past and if I do have that that still does not state that I cannot have my children or that there is some type of severe mental health illness that would keep me from taking care of my son and my daughter. Now, Jason made a strong petition to the court and stated that my son needs to be in a more secure environment where he could have his mental health treatment administered to him. Now, when Jason took my, when my son was released from this, the hospital, from University Hospital, now during that time, I'm going to back up, during that time, I was not allowed to see him. I was only allowed to visit with him one time because Jason had gone ahead and contacted the hospital and told them, even though I still had custody, he told them at that time to not allow me to come around my son, to not allow me to speak to him on the phone or even visit with him. So my son was going through this all alone without the help and support of his mother. My mother, my mother, his grandmother was allowed to visit him, but he still was not able to contact me or speak to me at all. So when my son was discharged from the hospital about a week later, they, uh, Jason Vincent put him into a group home called In Focus. Now, my son was just allowed to walk, walk out of that group home in the middle of the morning on Friday, April 15th. On Friday, April 15th, around two o'clock in the morning, my son was just allowed to run out of, walk out of the group home. He was not secure. No one stopped him. So does this sound like a secure environment where his mental health is, is, is taken care of? If you have a, a child who you've already petitioned to the court as someone who needs to be watched over, given a lot more secure care and treatment, but he's placed, you then place him in a group home. You take him from his mother and you place him in a group home where he is allowed to just walk out of that group home. No one stops him, it's not secure. He's able to make these decisions upon on his own, even though you already felt that he doesn't have the, 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 the mental competency to make any of these decisions and he needs to be watched over and secure in a secure environment. But you put him in an environment where he's allowed to just walk out and no one stops him. And then he proceeds to get into, go into someone's home. Now, I don't know why he broke into the home. I I don't know what happened. I was not allowed to even have a conversation with my son. I haven't spoken to him since. I've only talked to him a, 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 a for a brief period at an arraignment around other people when I cannot ask him any of these questions of what happened that night, why he did this. But the thing is here, my son was not protected. 
his, his, his safety was in jeopardy. He was in the custody of the Department of Children and Family Services, and Jason took it upon himself to put him in a group home where he was allowed, within two days of being there, he was allowed to walk out of this house in the middle of the morning, walk out of this group home in the middle of the morning, on the streets, wandering around, a 15-year-old disabled boy with no mental competency, who, who has mental health needs and is disabled. He has, he's allowed to just walk out of here with no supervision, he then goes and, and, and they said he breaks into someone's home. He went into someone else's house. Now, I don't know if my son was trying to find his sister's home because he does have an older sibling who lived around that area where he was found. But again, I have not been able to talk to him. They said he did not take anything. But now my son is facing charges for this. He was then apprehended by the police. And now he's been placed. He's been placed since then into a juvenile detention center where he has been ever since. Jason said that he was looking for placement. They still have not found placement for him. So I just want to let you know this. First of all, Jason calls my son who is still not getting his mental health treatment right now you took him from me because you said he was not getting mental health treatment but you placed him in a group home where he was not secure then he wanders off and gets into some type of trouble which you know I honestly hold him accountable my son should not be facing these charges right now because had he had the proper supervision that he needed which was already petitioned to the court and it was already stated that he needed this if he had been given the right environment a secure environment from the beginning if Jason had used the right discretion and put him in a group home where he would have been secure or not even removed him from me at all but you made it deem me as a threat and harm to my child that he was in danger around me and that I had no capabilities of, of, of watching over him but I, obviously you couldn't as either because now my son was allowed to walk off in the middle of the night and the thing is here I thank God because I've been praying for my son ever since he was taken out of the home I, I pray for my children every day and if had I not been praying my son could have gotten killed I would probably been getting a phone call instead of a phone call saying that he was gone and, 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 and instead of a phone call saying that he had been picked up by the police so I'm thankful that he was only arrested and that no one didn't pull out a gun or a weapon and, 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 and murder him because he broke into someone's home. Now, yes, my, my, my son, if he has a lot of issues and, and it's not his fault. But if you know that a child is cognitively delayed, he has cognitive problems, he has a, a, a underdeveloped IQ, his IQ is low and poor, he has all of these difficulties with his mental health. And you already say to yourself, he needs to be a in a secure environment, but then you put him in a group home where he can just wander off in the streets in the middle of the morning. Anything could have happened to him. He could have been kidnapped. He could have been murdered. Anything could have happened. So now my son is sitting inside of a juvenile detention center, which is a jail. It's just a jail for children. He has not been able to speak to me at all. He has not been able to talk to me and children, Department of Children and Family Services has custody of him. And I honestly feel that they are, are not competent to have custody of my son. Now, Jason argued to the court, like he said, I had all these mental illnesses. He stated that I, based off my religious beliefs, he, he tried to make it seem like I'm crazy. He said he came by my house and stood outside my door and heard me speaking in a strange language. Well, was this the strange language that you heard me speaking in? Or how about this? Maybe even this. We are here at Musenberg Beach and we are baptizing Melody. We need a melody. Yes. So Melody <laughs> Melody is getting baptized today. She wants to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. And she wants to follow Jesus completely. Mm. And in order to follow Jesus completely, is to receive him into your life mm. and also to receive the Holy Spirit, which is which is very important Amen. because the Holy Spirit come to bring power into your life to help you overcome your sin Amen. to help you overcome all things in this life Amen. so that is the holy spirit and jesus wants to forgive us our sins only if we come to him and repent
strange language that you stated and, and spoke about that you know nothing about is called speaking in tongues. It is a heavenly language that is given by the Holy Spirit. When Christians who are born again and who believe in Jesus Christ, when they accept Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, and they are baptized with his Holy Spirit, they're given these abilities. These are spiritual gifts. It's also in the Bible. Here's a scripture that talks about speaking in tongues. There are many people, many Christians who speak in this strange language, which you call it's a language that is unbeknownst to man. It's a heavenly language of angels where the Lord is interceding on our behalf. So, yes, you, you stated to the court all these things that you knew nothing of. You did not know my son. You did not know me and you did not put him in a proper environment that was best for his health. And so now my son is still, you know, not getting attention to his care. His care is not being met. There's no attentiveness to his mental health. He's now locked into a juvenile detention center in, a, in an environment that is not suitable for him which you say to yourself along with the attorneys and everyone else felt he should not be there but yet now my son is in a worse situation than he was before because you've decided to intervene and come in here and make decisions over something you knew nothing about had you come and visited with us and talked to your family and, and spoken to my son and got any questions that you had answered and, and got an understanding of who we are and what our beliefs are you would have known that you made the wrong choices that you judged us out of your own Pers perspectives and your own ideologies and because of your ignorance you did not know what you were doing and so you know it is sad that you know that people are allowed to make this decision over other people's lives it's sad that people are given this much power men and women in the department of children and family services and it's scary and i i feel sorry because you, you know you've probably done this to many children there are probably many children that you have wrongfully taken out of the home and put in, in, in care of other environments where, you know, you cause neglect and abuse. You put them in environments that were not suitable for them because you do not, you lack the proper judgment and discretion because you prematurely made assumptions off of a situation where you did not have the proper understanding because you decided to just come in here and you were gung-ho to prove something and, and, and to show that you have this power and you, you were capable of doing these things, but you actually dropped the ball. And see, this is the problem. This is happening all over within the Department of Children and Family Services and then you have those who are in the courts who, who they fulfill these honors and make these orders without even following up on it themselves. And this is how children are getting caught up in the system and they're not being held properly. Now you have a disabled child who is sitting inside of a jail, juvenile jail instead of being somewhere where he can get mental health treatment or being around the, his family and getting the care and support or in love of his family because of what you've decided to do because you have made assumptions that and, and, and spoke about things that you knew nothing about. So I just want to bring that all to your attention because it's very scary that you have many men and women who are working for the government, who are working for the Department of Children and Family Services, working for these juvenile courts that are allowed to make these decisions that will permanently affect and, 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 and ruin, sometimes even ruin and destroy children and families' lives. This needs to change. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you.